Welcome, everybody, to our morning daily podcast. This is the Prayer Revolution. I am Doyal with my good friend and co-host, Vera. And uh, this is the Prayer Revolution. We do this every day, 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, you can find all these recordings on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify. Just search Prayer Revolution. Um, if you're new to the podcast or listening for the first time, we get together every morning for a prayer and then we have a discussion about what it means to lead, to live a life of prayer and to bring the mood of prayer into our daily lives. And so um, we, before we get too far into it, we start off with the prayer with our good friend, Vera. So we'd love to have you lead us, Vera, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you, DG. Thank you for welcoming us always so warmly. I feel gratitude just being with you today. Super grateful. And uh Anyone who is tuning in right now, I know we have uh, Wisdom of the Sages. Uh, our dear friends have a podcast a lot of people um, listen to. And so you should have a little more of an intimate Saturday and Sunday morning. So grateful to, to be with you guys and, and feel a closeness to you this morning. And um, I wrote a prayer last night before going to bed. I'll share with you guys in a minute. Those of us that haven't prayed with us before, just take a moment to Get into a comfortable seat and we're shifting from the the domain of doing and uh, being active and um, outward focused to an inward focus and relaxing our body allowing for ourselves to come into a place of receiving and the whole idea right now is that we are softening and we're surrendering to a higher power and we're getting into a space to reconnect to that grace of a higher power, to reconnect to a love that is without conditions. And that is our, our, our little practice of prayer. So I'll lead us in a prayer right now. And you can also just take a moment and connect to your heart and connect to what it is that you're seeking right now in your life. And what is it that you're seeking most deeply that will be truly transformational for you? What are those qualities that you're looking for in your life to share a little bit more, to connect with a little bit more today? My dear Lord, help us to feel the power of this prayer, the power of your presence. Help us to see what's truly most important in our lives. We are all searching for meaning. We're searching for truth. And ultimately, my Lord, we are all searching for you. Help us to see ourselves with your eyes. Help us to see each other as your beloved children. And help us to see the sacredness in life itself. Let our hearts beat with faith. A faith that is unwavering in trials a faith that is on fire as we move closer to you on our journey home. Calling out your holy names, we are yours, my Lord. Please help us to feel this closeness and this connection with you as we call out some of the many unlimited names that you have right now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Thank you, Vera. Thank you, Doya. Good morning. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, sunshine. Good to see everybody <laughs> here. Glad that you're here. Good to see your smiling face. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm doing good. I was, uh, I was walking over. I have my little routine now. You know, like I. I commute to work every day you know I've, I've like my commute to work uh for so long has been like you know walking up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs and uh at living living in the building of the Bakke Center again I have an apartment there and so now I'm, I'm living you know about 10-15 minutes away from where um where Deanna and where, where we have our home and and uh, another 10 minute walk or so away from where I, I come every day to, to be on Prayer. 
different, uh, a different experience. And so when I was coming in today, I was, um, yeah, I, I just was really feeling uh, grateful. I was feeling grateful for, it was a, kind of a chilly morning in Florida, feeling grateful for the sun, the warmth of the sun. I was feeling grateful for, I got to see Deanna and Vera just for a few moments, you know, feeling grateful for just how beautiful they are and how much joy that every time I see them, they bring to my heart. I was feeling grateful for uh, the magnolias because they are in full bloom down here in Florida. Mm. The magnolias are pumping out. It's amazing. They're like lotus flowers on the trees. And I was feeling grateful for you, Doyle. Was, you came into my heart and my consciousness and um, feeling grateful for having the opportunity to come together and pray. And so I just was in this, uh, in, in this mood of gratitude, so many different thoughts and feelings kind of, kind of rolling through my mind and my heart. And, uh, you know, thinking about the verses in Bhagavad Gita that we've been reading over and, mm. you know, like that, uh, that consciousness of gratitude, that consciousness of just, you know, seeing, seeing the gift of life itself, seeing the gift in every single moment. And mm. that, that is, uh, that's, a, that's a state of consciousness that we, we choose. We choose to be in that state of consciousness and mm. surrender to that state of consciousness and, uh, and, and, and develop it, you know, and awaken it uh or or not and so today i was just doing the best i could to to choose that and and it, and it feels good it feels good man how about you Doyle? what you thinking about it is looking to be a beautiful day here in new york city um finally april's been a cold and dreary month um and uh and finally it looks like the sun's coming out today it's gonna be a warm one um and uh as you were saying just walking and feeling grateful for the sunshine i was thinking of Srila Prabhupada, our teacher's teacher, who was sitting in, uh, in the Bombay sunshine one day with a group of students. And he said, one day you will feel the rays of the sun to be like the warm embrace of your lover. Mm. So when the sun is shining down on you, you will feel those, those rays of the sunshine to be like the warm embrace of your lover. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like looking out into the world. I think somebody that lives in that mood of, of, of prayer is, is um, you start to look around and you start to see the hand of divinity in your life in, in many beautiful ways. And you start to see it in that, in that loving hand, in that loving mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So I just thought of that as you were talking about being right yeah. before the sunshine. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's interesting. I think with spiritual vision, you can start to see everything like that, like, you see the sun as the warm embrace of your lover. And you mm -hmm. also see the rain as the mm -hmm. nurturing gift of your provider, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. you can see, you can see every circumstance in that light. So, mm -hmm. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I was reminded, I was reminded just uh, somehow Krishna's grace bringing me into gratitude. I was actually talking to my brother yesterday and he was talking about it. You know, he was saying, you know, there's, there's such an emphasis on willpower and self-control. We've got to really just, you know, to be, to progress in life, we've got to just suppress those, suppress those demons, that, 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 the, the, the bad dog. We've got to suppress them. We've got to put them in the kennel, you know, and push, uh, starve them. And, and you know, and, and yeah, then we will succeed. We'll experience success. And, and uh, that it's, you know, it's like, okay. It's like, you know, reminds me of Srila Prabhupada, like his, his young students saying, mm. you know, don't do this, and, you know, don't do this. And, you know, in the Vedas, it says, don't do this. And the yoga practice, it says, don't do this, and don't do that. And he's like, this isn't a, a path of all the things you don't do in life. This is a path of all the, the enriching things that we do, the, the enriching things that we can be grateful for and, and that it energizes us, right? It becomes the things we do that, that overwhelm our life and, and we're not even thinking of, of the, the lower things as much. And so my brother was saying, you know, it's like, you know, I'm just noticing in my life that, you know, I notice, okay, I come home from a, uh, a tough day at work and you know, I got three kids and my wife and maybe she had a bad day and it's like, I'm expected to be super dad. And like, I just like came out of like a war zone, you know? And, uh, and it's like, sometimes I just like, Oh man, I don't feel it. And I, and I really, you know, I feel that lower nature. And he's like, and I try to, you know, I try to push it down and I try to, he's like, man, it's just like so, unsustainable it's mm. so draining and like it just like feels like hopeless 
us at this point. He, had, you know, he was listening to a podcast and it kind of triggered this, this different way of thinking was um, in those tough times to be able to pause and like re-engage with gratitude, to re-engage with it. I'm coming back home and like, oh, sh- you know, man, I got to, all right, I got to look at the kid, I got to clean up the house, I got to be present. You know, it's like, okay, there's this obstacle, there's this challenge. And it's like, okay, either it's willpower, like, okay, all right, I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to show up, you know? Or it's like, you know, he's just, he's finding like these, he's finding these superpowers from pausing, you know, in the car before he walks in the door and just, even if it's for a few moments, how grateful he is for his wife, what she does every single day to take care of the kids, how grateful he is for his children, their health and well-being. And it's like renewed, you know, he's like, he comes back to life. And so um, this, this kind of, this paradigm, the paradigm between, you know, using willpower as a way to really succeed and really, um, you know, approach life with effectiveness and, uh, and also, you know, being able to look at this tool of gratitude, actually, look mm. at this as a, as a tool of tapping into actually our original consciousness, tapping into actually the nature of our soul. And as we express mm. gratitude, we start to tap into that limitless energy. We start to tap into that love that can mm. co- keep going without conditions. We start to tap into that ability that is, uh, is really, truly limitless. Yeah. As we connect to those spiritual qualities, I was. Um, uh, thank you for sharing. I think it's beautiful. I was. I was. Um, just this past couple of days, I was listening to the, a few speeches because I, I was putting together this little intro clip for our podcast. We want to get a little intro clip going. You, you guys are gonna love it. It's amazing. <laughs> Doyle's working on a masterpiece. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, I. Um, anyways, I was. I was listening to this this lecture, this speech by Martin Luther King Jr. It's a beautiful speech. It's a uh, knock at midnight. If you look it up on a YouTube video, knock at midnight. And he talks about um, these very, very challenging moments that he would experience throughout his life. I mean, just living under the fear of death constantly. And, and the knock at midnight referred specifically to these phone calls he would get in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we, we go to bed tonight. I can turn my phone off. No one's going to bug me. But, you know, previously, um, you know, before the world of cell phones, you know, someone would ring your phone and the whole house would hear it. It'd wake you up in the middle of the night, you know, so mm-hmm. he'd get these phone calls on his landline and it'd be people like just kind of saying just mean, nasty things like get out of this town. Or I'm going to blow up your house and blow up your whole family. Like just like death threats in the middle of the night. And he remembers like there was one time where he got this particular call. There was this particular nasty voice and normally he would shake it off. But this one particular night, he just couldn't shake it. And so in the mm-hmm. middle of the night, he got up and his wife and kids were still sleeping in the other room. And he just sat at his kitchen table over this cup of coffee. And he began to pray over this cup of coffee. And he began to realize, like, what is it that's going to get me through this? And he said, he started talking about, you know, he's giving this speech and people are cheering him in the background. And he said, you know, in those moments, you have to call on that power that you know you learn about as a kid growing up in church or school or whatever you know and he's like you can't call on this person or that person and he said you have to, and he says this beautiful like strong voice that he says that power that can make a way out of no way you know he's got mm-hmm. this very powerful voice and it's just like and it's like and he's like and he's like and i and i call on the power and it revives my soul you know what i mean and i recognize that that i'm not alone so the question that was coming to mind is like you use the word willpower, mm. you know, use the word willpower. And so it's like that ultra sense of self, that over, overly zealous sense of self-reliance mm-hmm. gets me a certain, gets me far to a certain extent, but it, it, all, it always wears out. Mm-hmm. Like I end up feeling worn out at a certain point. Like mm-hmm. I might be able to punch through a tough day, a, a tough season, a tough conversation, but that, that self-reliance willpower, it, it eventually like, it wears out. Mm-hmm. So the question I ask is like, what power do I call on mm-hmm. in those moments? Mm-hmm. If I'm feeling weak, if I'm feeling depleted, if I'm feeling scared, like what, what power am I actually calling on? And I think that's, that's the prayer revolution. That's the revolution of mm-hmm. consciousness, of thought of like, oh, I need to call on a different power. Mm-hmm. And I need to learn how to do that on a regular basis so that it's not just a lucky rabbit foot that I pull out of my pocket when I need it, but it's a relationship that I've cultivated over time 
so that it's available and I know how to call on that power. Mm -hmm. And so I was thinking of that in that Martin Luther King speech. And as you're talking about with your, with your brother and that willpower, it's like the, 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 the tension or the difference between willpower and higher power, mm -hmm. you know, and like, mm -hmm. which, which one do I lean on more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You were going to say something, DG? Let's say, which one do you lean on more? Oh, I definitely lean on self-reliance for sure. You know, and, and it's, it's something that, you know, I, I, I'm seeing the, the frailty of it more and more as time goes on. And, you know, as you were, as you were sharing that, it's like, okay, I, I will, I will power. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not, no, I will. It's thy will. Right. It's like, it's like, where is that power? Where is that power? I'm hearing you. It's like an, in the, in the short term, it seems like I can control. It seems like my power can get me somewhere, can move me some way, but actually, you know, it's, it's gonna, I'm going to lose in the long term if that's where I'm putting all my energy if that's where i'm putting all my focus it wears out you know that self-reliance wears out over the long run and in the long run you know we're, we're investing in that relationship with the higher power like you said like it makes a way out of no way right it it makes that clear for me that i don't see a way i don't see how to get out of this situation i don't see how to get out of this suffering i don't see how to get out of whatever circumstance i'm I don't see it. I could try everything I can. I could try this way. That way. actually, it's time to it's time to actually recognize that it's not on my own. That I'm going to figure it out. And then the more that we do that throughout life, we start to see. Actually, it was another person that came in that, that helped me to remember God. It was another person that that gave me the reminder that actually I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. You know, I let the river swirling. You know, sometimes there's little pools of water, and it seems like I'm stuck. But that river, that will is right there, you know, yeah. and all it takes, you know, is a little bit of time and we swirl back into that river again, we feel connected against that power, moving toward our goal again. So I'm, I'm appreciating, uh, yeah, really appreciating you highlighting that. And yeah. I am a, I'm a fool when it comes to self-reliance. And uh, I know when, when I'm, I'm teaching in New York, you know, so often, I'll kind of ask, you know, certain questions and, and, and one, one that's so funny that I find so funny literally every single time is, uh, you know, how do you know you're making the right decision in your life? I'll ask this question, like just the, you know, yoga students or you know, yoga teacher training or workshops. How do you know you're making the right, the right decision in your life? How do you know that it's actually going to lead you to true fulfillment, true happiness, what you're really seeking deep down in your heart? And uh, people are like, well, you know, I really think about it, you know, I really discern I really put my thought into it, really put my energy I research. I, like there's, there's so much, like mm. it ends up being like this total self-reliance, the backpacker that's hiking to the mountain without having talked to a guide, without having talked to people that have done it before, without, you know, realizing that they need help and they need support on the path becomes this, uh, this, this burdensome life. And so I don't want to live that life. I don't want to live that life. I want to, I want to live a life with friends that we, we, we share, we share it together. We figure it out together. We struggle in it together and we celebrate it together. Did you ever see that movie? Oh, I think it was 127 hours or something like that. And something. Like oh, hours. oh my James God. Franco. Oh, you that movie? No. Yes. Where that don't guy, remind me. The true story of the guy. He just, he decides to go hiking. He leaves his phone at home. Doesn't tell anybody where he's going. He was like rock jumping wherever he's going in, in the desert somewhere it was california arizona or wherever and he falls down this down this place and his arm gets lodged between a rock and a and a wall and he, nobody knows where he is and he's just stuck there for i think it's 127 hours whatever length of time it was pause right there Doyle. pause right there suspense he's stuck, stuck. What I'm going to ask, real, what I'm asking real, real quick is I didn't realize my phone is dying and I can't plug it in and have my headphones at the same time. Would you switch your headphones to um, the computer? Otherwise, we're going to we're going to drop out. All right, we're switching. We're doing a real quick switch on the mic. Give me. It's like uh, it's like uh, what was it? Uh, Wayne's World car. You know, whenever Wayne's World would have a car and they'd have to. They'd have to switch to a car because whenever they're playing hockey in the street and there's a car coming, it's like car. I, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, all right, I'm ready when you are, Veer. Give me one sec, sorry. AJ, game on, not yet, hold on. For those, for those of us who are listening to the recording, we have a live Zoom chat that tunes in, and we also have a live Instagram feed that's coming in. And so we're recording both of them at the same time. And uh, so we, we're, just, we're just shifting our audio inputs here. You awesome. ready? I'm all yours, babe. Yeah, Game okay, on. so we're, 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 we're in Wayne's world, right? Is that where we were? No, we're in 127 hours. 127 we hours. This is expensive, that guy. Basically, you're saying, like, I don't want to, you're talking about self-reliance, going on a hiking trip without telling people where I'm going or just doing it on my own. Um, but I, I, w- I was thinking of this other, and I know a lot of our listeners follow the, uh, this. There's this amazing Instagram account, uh, The Holistic Psychologist. Um, and... Uh, and uh, she's she's great. She's great, and she um, posts all these really really like profound um, posts about uh, like life and our just kind of state of being. And she mentioned the most misunderstood addiction is the addiction to chaos, stress, and emotional abandonment. And I was I was she has this whole, whole this whole reading here that I was going to look at, but she. I was just thinking of it in the sense of, we're talking about willpower versus higher power, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a sense of like, why why don't I just kind of like lean back and surrender? And I think sometimes it's because it doesn't feel as exciting as I need or want it to be sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. That it's almost kind of, it may even feel boring Mm -hmm. to the, to the, um, emotionally addicted sense of self that I have that is used to like these constant rushes of whether it's positive material excitement or even the negative, um, the negative feeling like she, she, she writes here. I was going to read some of her, some of her, um, what she wrote in the, in the, in the, in the commentary, the words of this post. I just thought, I just think for me, it speaks so much of like, why do I choose that again and again? Mm. why do I choose my own willpower again and again and again why do I choose why do I ignore like the post signs of like that are pointing me in a direction of safety of comfort of reassurance like why do I ignore that again and Mm. again and again Mm -hmm. and it just speaks so much truth to me um she says emotional addiction begins when we're raised in environments that cause an activated nervous system response so it's kind of it's kind of like 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 stress um it's it's almost like 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 chronic stress or insomnia it creates this sense where the nerves are so overstimulated that it's difficult for them to actually calm down and become a state of peace mm. you know what i mean and so it's it's actually becomes difficult to relax because it's mm-hmm. so overly stimulated and activated the nerves mm-hmm. are so overly stimulated and activated that they don't know how to relax Mm-hmm. it's like stretching a rubber band. Like if you stretch a rubber band, it goes back to normal, normal state. But if you keep stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching and wear like, like your shirt, like I have shirts and my mom would always say, don't stretch out your shirt. You're going to ruin the collar. Yeah. Ever, ever have that? You know, my mom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My mom says, like if you stretch out a shirt, it ruins the collar and the natural shape of it. Mm. And so I think that like our consciousness, our brain, our heart, gets so stretched by the traumatic, difficult experiences of life where that becomes the new normal, you know, like uh, uh, ordinary, anything that's done often enough becomes ordinary. Mm. So even the insanity of our material lives becomes ordinary and we become used to it. And the familiar actually even becomes comfortable, even when it's detrimental to our personal well being. Mm-hmm. And so she mentions that stress, chaos, and emotional abandonment, they tend to come as a package, mm. cause neurotransmitters to be released and create hormonal responses in the body. And the body plus mind learn these emotional states. Mm-hmm. So the body and the mind, it, like, it becomes familiar and it learns that these states of, of, of chaos, of, of stress, of mm-hmm. anxiety, as, as, as difficult or as uncomfortable as they are, they just become the norm. Mm-hmm. And she says, we have something called the homeostatic impulse. Mm-hmm. It keeps us thinking and repeating familiar behavior of our past to repeat these emotional states and this you're saying how do i know if i'm making the right choice of feeling stuck she says this makes us feel stuck powerless to change and all of this is a subconscious process 
the trauma of experiencing chronic levels of these emotions makes us unable to feel other emotional states. This is why we unconsciously, unconsciously seek out the stress and chaos. Mm -hmm. And so she's going on, I mean, just, she's just going on and on and on. But it's just like, it's that sense of like, I, I, thought of, I thought of this post when I was asking the question, why? Mm -hmm. Why do I do that? Mm -hmm. Why do I constantly like go back to old ways of thinking that don't mm -hmm. serve me? It's you're like, you are well trained, Bubba. I'm well, I am well trained in the art of screwing myself over. Mm. You know? And I think of it and I think like, it's like, oh, it's like, it's like I've got a stomach ache and I feel like I just ate a bunch of fried foods. And I like, I, I, I don't do this as often anymore, but like, you know, I'm a chips for dinner kind of guy sometimes. And it's like, <laughs> I've, 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 I've suffered enough from doing that. Like I used to be like, I'm 35 years old. I used to be like, I have a high pit to constitution. I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of like passion in my being. And so it's like, I, I ran hot. I ran hard throughout my life. And even though I'm still relatively young, like I feel it. Like I remember when I was getting to my late twenties, I was like, oh, living as a monk in the ashram, getting a few hours of sleep a night and just running on empty fumes. Like I could do it. And there was a rush. And now as I got into my late twenties, I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do that as much anymore. Now I'm in my mid thirties and I'm like, oh, I used to be able to eat a bag of chips for lunch and just keep on moving. And now it's like, I eat a bag of chips for lunch. I was like, Oh, like the thought of like, why would I keep doing that? You know, and so it's like, it's like, but it's like, I still could be suffering. And somebody puts a bag of chips in front of me or somebody puts like a nice, nourishing, healthy meal, like some steamed broccoli with like an avocado sauce and quinoa. And it's like nourishing. Joseph Cartman's laughing because he, he saw me when we had to dinner sometimes. And, and he saw me <laughs> when we had dinner in our India trips. When we go to India, Vera like has these whole like, this is what you should eat and be gentle with yourself. Not too many sweets, eat simply. And then I'm at the other end of the table, like ordering an extra order of fries and ice cream. And Vera's like, Oh my God, <laughs> guys, like this is not, we did not get on the same page with the memo. So Joseph was sitting next to me. Joseph's like, true story. So anyways, it's like, you can put this nourishing food in front of me. I'm like, and like, this would make me feel better. This is everything I want. And it's like, uh, let me just take the chips, you know? Mm. It's like, why, why do I keep going for the bag of chips? It's because mm. it's familiar and my body mm. become addicted to it in some way. And my mind becomes addicted to that sense of self-reliance. And so why don't I accept that loving hand of God in my life? Because it's not, it's not chaotic. It's not disruptive. It's not sexy enough. It's not, it's not juicy enough. It's not mm. fast paced enough. Mm. The way that I've normally conditioned my mind and body to work and experience life. But it's like, there is a new way of doing it. And I think that that's what we, that's why we need each other. That's why I need you in my life here. That's why I need you. I need you reaching out and you'd be like, no, like this is actually, I need this you. Is actually healthy. This is, this is <laughs> exciting. This is exciting. This is a different kind of exciting. So I need you yeah. to pump me up and to do that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The delayed gratification, you know, being able to see that actually there's something that is like you said, like, wow, like a, the warmth of my lover is the sun touching my skin. Like, okay, that takes me, you know, that, that may take, a, that, that may take a little bit more time for me to feel that, you know, and, and maybe right now we could feel that too, you know, but that delayed gratification for actually yes. something that's truly nourishing. I love oh my it. gosh. Vivi saying the ice cream in Govinda is that never came for you, Doyle. Well, she knows that story when I was there. Oh, Pat knows the story too. People know that story that I was in Govinda. <laughs> I was like, oh, there was like 30 of us that descended on this Govinda's restaurant in, in Mumbai when we were on our wisdom training. We took a day. It was, it was like we were on this, like in this, in this Govardhan Echo Village, this sustainable, beautiful, like majestic place of serenity and healthy living and all our meals and waking up early. And we're like, getting on this new style of life of like healthy eating and regulated meals and, and, and all of these things. And then we took a day trip to Mumbai to go on this boat trip to these like ancient caves. And it's like one day in the city and it's like, you for, we forgot everything we learned. We're just like, we, we made a pit stop at Starbucks and everyone was like, Oh, Starbucks, I'll take 20, 20 lattes and, <laughs> you know, and all these things. And then we took a, we took this restaurant, this restaurant, this, this vegan vegetarian uh, restaurant at Govinda's in Mumbai next to the temple. And I was trying to get an ice cream and I kept ordering and there were so many of us and they started to run out. And at a certain point they just started ignoring my order. 
And I was, and everyone went on the table was like, let it go, Doyle, just let it go. And I was like, excuse me, did you bring that? I'm like, yes, it will bring it. And I was like, it was getting time to go. And I was like, excuse me. One more drink. One, one more, more drink. drink. One more drink. And I was like, strawberry. So we're out of strawberry. I was like, what do you have left? And everyone was like, let it go, let it go. And I was with there with, and I was the teacher. I was with all of my students. And they're just like, let it, let it go, let it go. Rem remember what you taught us this morning? Remember? And I was like, I was like, they were like, like I was like a child. They're like dragging me out of the restaurant back onto the bus, you know, just like embarrassing myself. And so, <laughs> so Vivi put that, 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 that ice cream that never came. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's like, is it, is it that big of a deal? But no, it, it's not even the thing itself that's so gratifying. It's just the idea of the thing itself. Yeah. We attach ourselves to an idea of, 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 of being, of, 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 of enjoyment. We attach ourselves to this idea. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, it's like um, in, in Chalpati, in this temple in, 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 in Mumbai, they have, all, they have hundreds of monks in this temple. And many of them are... Um, college graduates, engineers, but I've heard that 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 specifically, it's very difficult to get uh, people in medical school, like to 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 drop out and become monks specifically. Not that that's their goal, but it's like people in colleges or whatever, like because specifically in medical school, there's such a there's such a um, there's so much investment into going to being a doctor, the idea that I'm going to be anything else in life is so hard to let go of because there's so much investment. You know what I mean? Like you prep in high school and then you go to undergrad and then you go to grad school and then you go to med school and then you do your residency. And it's just like so much investment into how my life's supposed to end up. The idea of letting that go is so scary. Mm -hmm. And we've invested so much of our life into the idea of who I'm meant to be materially and what it means for me to rely on myself, the idea of letting it go is just nuts. Even if it doesn't make sense anymore. Mm -hmm. Even if they're actually out of ice cream. Even if I don't need any more ice cream. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not as tasty as I think it is. <laughs> I ordered it and I've been waiting for 20 minutes. I gotta get it, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, but it's just not. Uh... And interesting, you know what happened on that bus ride home for those that know? We, I picked up a bunch of harmoniums from a harmonium shop in the city to take back and to, to sell or to bring back to America. And, uh, you know, somebody put the, harmo the harmoniums above the seat, above mm -hmm. the seats, um, you know, but it was like, it wasn't really secure and you're going on these bumpy rides in India and the harmonium never had, the, the harmonium fell out of the seat and just fell right on my head. Wow. Bumped me right on the head. And it was like, looking back at it now, I see Krishna being like, you dummy. Do I, have to literally, do I have to literally knock some sense into you? <laughs> you're, being a little, you're being a little wild puppy, bro. You're being a do wild puppy. Do I have to literally knock sense into you? It was, like, it was like 11 at night. It was like a long bus ride home. We were just about getting there to where, to our, back to the eco village. And so... Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's my story of, you know, continuously moving from the holistic psychologist to ice cream at Govinda's to a harmonium bumping on my head. Yeah. That's the, that's the story of me continuously leaning towards willpower rather mm -hmm. than my higher power. Yeah. Something we could take home with us today. I was just thinking about that. And, and, you know, today, instead of leaning into our willpower with whatever it may be, when we notice like, okay, we're trying to suppress some urge or we're trying to avoid doing something which we think is a time waster or something that we feel like is actually not really uh, helpful for our growth in life instead of using our willpower let's open up to our higher power in the mood of gratitude let's find something that we're truly grateful for and let's just see how that energizes you let's see how that supercharges you into yes. positive action yes Mm -hmm. Totally. I'm actually going to read uh, before we, as we close out, I want to read these verses. Um, what chapter of the, of the Gita is it in the three modes of material nature where he's talking about that, which uh, let me look at the three modes of material nature, chapter 14. Let me just look, let me look, let me look. Mm -hmm. um, it should be understood where it talks about that happiness, which is, Mm. You know where it talks about passion and, and happiness? Passion, that which is, uh, I think maybe it's in the 18th chapter. 
have a feeling that this may be for tomorrow. It's just a feeling I'm having. I'm not totally sure about it. Maybe like the ice cream in Mumbai. I'm not sure. No, I need sure, it. But... It's ice cream. There it is. I got it. <laughs> no, hold on a second. No, I lost it. I lost it. Oh my god. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. Just because as you're talking about willpower. All right. And higher power, all right. Willpower and higher power. That there's a sense that there are certain things that taste. The Krishna says that they taste like nectar in the beginning, but poison in the end. Mm -hmm. That's potato chips for me. They're so good, salty, mm -hmm. crispy, but they just they don't sit in my stomach the way they used to. Mm -hmm. And then there's certain things which taste a little bitter in the beginning, but like nectar in the end. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference, I think, between willpower and higher power sometimes. And as, as we develop that acquired taste, it eventually tastes like nectar in the beginning and nectar in the end. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that as we start to release that, that fierce that that fierce attachment to willpower mm. um and we start to to lean further into higher power then um it will start it's going to be uncomfortable at first and you're not going to get that immediate um reaction that you're normally used to but mm -hmm. you're you're rewiring your your way of thinking and your way of being mm -hmm. okay through gratitude, through gratitude, all of us today are gratitude warriors I'm seeing you the hands are folded. We're, we're flexing those muscles. We're flexing those muscles. Come on, DG outro. We're, we're dancing. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much. We don't have any outro music left. And so what, we don't have any outro music right now in our podcast. So we just have Vera. He just dances and does some mudras. But we're so, so glad that you're here. If you're listening, please continue to uh, join us every day. We have a live Zoom chat that we'd love for you to be on. You can interact. We have a live Zoom board. We can see your faces. You can see our faces. You can chat on Zoom and we can interact with your questions. Please, if you'd like to get on our Zoom chat, please write to us at prayerrevolution at bhaktisenter.org or go to bhaktisenter.org slash online for some of our programs and other offerings that we have. We'd love to hear from you. Write to us. Be in touch with us. Send us your questions. Send us your feedback. What do you like? What do you want us to shift? Do differently. Um, and if you're listening, please go on to Apple Podcasts, Prayer Revolution, subscribe, leave us a five-star review. It means a lot to us. We're on Spotify, SoundCloud, and you can share these with a friend. And uh, we love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow, and please be well. Take care, everybody. Bye. Hari, hari. Hari, hari.